Hello students, time for another gizmo. This one is called ray tracing. And what we're going to do is we're going to see how the ray diagrams that we've been practicing um, can create real and virtual images in both concave and convex mirrors. So go to the Explore Learning website. I will meet you there and I will show you how this gizmo works. Okay, so now that we're at the Explore Learning website, we want to find the gizmo, so if we click here and we just type in ray, we're going to do the ray tracing for mirrors. And we'll launch the gizmo. And here it is. So as always, when you're doing this under the lesson info, the vocabulary sheet, always a handy resource to have while you're going through this. And you'll notice that some of these terms should be familiar to you. And we also want the student exploration sheet because that is the guide and it tells us how to complete the gizmo and also where to record our answers and our data. And if we take a look at this gizmo here, uh, what we want to do for this one, uh, to start out, what I would do is um, we're going to get rid of just a couple of these um, extra lines. These are the rays that are there. Uh, the other thing that I would recommend too is to colorize these rays. So I'll just put them back just for a second so you can see it's easier now to keep track of which ones are there, provided that you're not colorblind, right? Um, and then over here, we can also show the different segments that are attached to those lines, right? So you can um, keep or remove whichever ones work for you. This is the side where we have our, uh, our actual object, right? So here's the light bulb. And so these go right through the middle of the light bulb and you can take the light bulb and you can move it around, you can move it up or down. You can keep it on the principal axis or you can move it to wherever you like. We also have the option over here where the blue dot is. This is the focal point and you can change the focal point length and you'll see that the actual shape of the mirror changes. If we have an image on the back side of the mirror, of course, this would be a virtual image. And that's why we have these dotted lines for these virtual rays. They're not actually there, but it's where they appear to be. And if we have an image that forms on this side over here, then we would have a real image because it's real rays of light that are converging and forming the image that we can see. So this is a convex mirror, of course, because the curve goes in this direction, right? It's sort of it's curving away from the, um, the object that we have, but we can also over here put a concave mirror. And again, for the concave mirror, we can move this back and forth and, and you can add these other rays here after, but just to keep it so it's less cluttered, I'm going to keep them off for the time being. Uh, and we can also change the focal length. Oh, what do we have over here? We've got some sort of, um, an image that's forming over here. So the image is on this side. So perhaps it's a real inverted image. Um, and we can see that it's actually getting bigger and also getting smaller. And if we add in the other rays, very similar to the way that we've done our ray diagrams, you can see they converge on where that actually is. So you have options for using concave mirror, convex mirror, you can change the focal length, you can also change the position of the actual object itself. Uh, one other thing, let me just go back over here to the concave mirror for a second. And we'll bring this one back into view. Um, how do we tell uh, the magnification because we may have to measure the height? Well, we can do the show ruler over here. And if we click on the show ruler, we can actually drag these dots around and you can put them in any orientation over here. So we can measure the height of the object and then we can also measure the height of the image. And if we know the difference, that's one of the ways that we can get our magnification. Um, th this is sort of numbered, but if you wanted to, you could also change and measure this way as well to get a more precise measurement of P for the object and then Q for the image. So those are the tools that you have available for this ray tracing gizmo. Uh, it's very much like the ray diagrams that we've done. And it's also like the practice problems that we've done. So give it a try. Let me know if you have any questions.